I think I think so. Scrapes in my hands, but I land on something soft. Oh, here, I got a flashlight, dude. Hold on. Oh, oh my God! Shit! Oh, my God. shit. We are talking Red Woods. This one directed by Nicholas Danko, who also co-wrote this one. Now this is a found footage movie, but it's not a supernatural movie, though it is a horror slash thriller film. Now, the setup is this. We have a group of urbex, I think they're called, urbanex, whatever it is. Urban explorers, essentially, where a group of enthusiasts go and meet up go and explore abandoned buildings and structures and film it for their various kind of social media. So the setup is that we have a group of essentially strangers, although some of them do kind of know, you know, someone in the group, things like that. But generally speaking, most of these people don't know each other. And they're all going to meet up to explore this uh, uh, kind of run of these abandoned buildings that are in the middle of nowhere. They're in the woods somewhere. Now, one of these guys, uh, who's, who's kind of like this... Um, conspiracy theorist guy is actually searching for his brother who he knows has gone to this location but hasn't been seen since. Now as they go exploring there seems to be someone else in these woods, someone who has dark intent and someone who wants to use their own video kind of recording situation but to try and record a very different type of video. What will happen? You'll have to watch the movie to find out. So let's talk about what works with Redwoods. So, in a way, it's a different type of found footage movie in some ways because the threat is not supernatural, but it is a kind of horror movie slash kind of thriller. Uh, but it seems more of a crime-based one. But there are horror elements to it. It also the way the the, the way this is filmed. They make a big sudden dance about having some of these cameras that are like really kind of high tech cameras with big kind of like stabilization rigs and things like this that seem far too bulky to be moving around in, in kind of the woods and stuff for this sort of thing. But nonetheless, they're there. Uh, and as such, we, we do get certain shots where, and certain sequences where we get very high quality footage that seems to be very stable and not a lot of shaky cam. Uh, so it's actually quite an easy film to digest if you're not a huge fan of found footage movies because there's, there's, there isn't so much of the kind of like the shaking all over the place which, although it might be realistic, is obviously quite difficult to watch as a kind of piece of entertainment and I feel that was kind of a smart way to try and get around it although I do think it creates its own problems that I don't honestly think someone would bring this amount of equipment for this kind of um, level of going rural if that makes sense. Uh, I think this story here is its strongest point, the actual narrative of, of where this, this movie is going. Because I feel it um, takes some very kind of unique twists in a way, and it, it's kind of a fan footage movie that you see less often. Maybe it's not totally unique, there are other examples other than kind of like ghosts and stuff which you get tend to get in fan footage, but I found it to be quite interesting. There are some elements that are, are dropped in to the movie uh, that I feel uh, were were quite original in, in a lot of ways and quite interesting and had a few when we were you know things are revealed about certain characters and I thought that was quite there's some quite interesting stuff and quite interesting threads that you can kind of pull on. I also have to say I think the location shooting here is excellent. They've obviously found some legitimate abandoned houses uh, that really do look run down, beat up, and quite spooky, and these very kind of remote areas. So in the context of the film, it absolutely, the location shooting here works fantastically. I, to be honest with you, I was wondering how they got away with the kind of the final sequence, shall we say. I don't want to say what it is, but I was like, how have they done that? Um, because it seems like it's, what, what you see on screen looks real, and I'm thinking, surely that can't be like a legitimate thing that's happened. Who knows? I don't want to say what it is, but there you go. What doesn't work? I hate to say it, I think the acting is quite poor in this movie, but I'd say it's not just the acting, it is the way some of the characters are written, and those two things in unison unfortunately make for some quite unbelievable characters. So I, although I think the, the story is written well, where the kind of the plot is going is, is a well-written and interesting story, the characters, the way they are written, are stereotypes, um, 
over-the-top performances and odd decisions that simply don't make any logical sense. So we get these, for example, we, we're introduced to this one girl who we're told is an empath. She can kind of, I mean, you know, I'm assuming these people don't know what an empath is. Uh, ultimately, it means you can pick up feelings and stuff, apparently. But this woman seems to be have different psychic powers from whatever the, the plot requires of her. And I have to be honest with you, it's, it's a little silly and over the top at times. To be honest, it doesn't actually factor that much into, into the plot-wise. So it doesn't really, it didn't need to begin there. And it's one of the sillier aspects. I think some of the kind of the decisions, again, like I've said, we, we, that, that are taken here um, don't make any logical sense. People seem very, very erratic. And, uh, you know, it, it seems like they are making just unrealistic decisions about what would happen in that kind of that sort of time and stuff like that. Um, there are altercations between the people and some of them are quite intense. And th again, there's just like, what would happen if that were to really happen? It doesn't happen in this film, to be, to be fair. I think our antagonist, or threat, should we call it, is a little bit... Uh, needed to be filled out a little bit more, needed to have a little bit more context about reasons and stuff, and that's kind of like what the end game is. So I felt that was quite lacking. Um, as with kind of some of the found footage films that you get, we don't really see a lot happening on screen. A lot of it is off camera, uh, as is the kind of the case with a, a lot of these found footage movies. Um, so overall, I found this to be a somewhat entertaining movie, but I was pulled out of it by some poor character choices and some quite bad performances as well, unfortunately, where people have a real bad tendency to massively overact uh, and it doesn't help with some very kind of unrealistic situations that are written for them. But other than that, I think the story is actually quite solid. So I'm going to give this one a 5 out of 10. Have you seen it? What did you think of it? Leave me a comment and I'll look forward to seeing you next time. Bye for now.